what is up everybody today i'm going to show you how to preserve sand fleas so stay tuned now you may be wondering why i'm doing this entire process um i did a lot of research some of the old timers down in north carolina that i've talked to you know surf casters bridge fishermen that use sand fleas religiously uh swear by this method um you can throw them in the freezer in a bag and freeze them I do find that you know that'll hold them for a week or so where they're pretty much the same as they were live um, any longer than that they do become softer the shells are become a little bit more brittle and they are you know harder to keep on a hook um, by doing this method you do lock in the scent and preserve them for a little bit of a extended period of time uh, everything I've read says up to a year is like the ideal time to use them like this uh, after that they do become a little bit more brittle but knowing how we use bait I don't think they're gonna you know wait more than a year in our freezer all right so before we get going um, this type of process that I'm about to show you is gonna save you a lot of time and get you through those you know early spring late fall months when you know sand fleas are hard to come by um, if you live where I live um, New Jersey or on the East Coast you know these guys are pretty prevalent on the beach but once the water warms up is when you know you see them in high numbers um, once it starts to get cold they burrow pretty deep in the sand and you know it's not to say you can't catch them but it comes it becomes you know exponentially harder to get them because they're so much deeper than where they t typically are you know in the summer months so what we're about to do we're gonna take you know this bucket of fleas I just caught we're going to put them in a strainer here rinse them out uh, with fresh water that's the first step you want to make sure you rinse them before you you know uh, blanch them the reason being uh, they do urinate and if you just throw them in the you know pot right you know from the beach you know that urine kind of softens the shell a little bit and in the long run makes them a little bit weaker and they kind of fall off the hook a little bit more um, I have tried just freezing these guys straight up and I do notice that the shell does become very soft which is no good uh, fish could just rip it right off but uh, let's get to the step one all right step number two you want to fill up a bucket with cold water this is coming out of the hose ice cold um, you can add ice as well what this is going to be is where we dump them after we put them in the boiling pot of water and what this will do is stop the cooking process if you just put them in the you know boiling pot of water and then dump them you know they're going to be continuing to cook and you don't want that because then you could overcook them uh, but just get a little bit more on them and this fresh water will not kill them you know from a rinse if you you know left them in fresh water for a while they'd probably die now right now I do have a pot of water boiling on the stove um, I'm gonna bring it outside put it on the grill when we get ready to do things strong recommendation you do not want to do this in your house because uh, there is an odor that you know comes from boiling these sand fleas and you know you probably don't want your house smelling like it so uh, what I'm doing, I'm just boiling the pot of water on the stove. I'm going to bring it out to, uh, you know, the deck once it's at a roiling bowl, uh, boil, and uh, that's when we'll add the fleas. Uh, while you're waiting, you want to lay out a towel. So once we boil them, we're going to dump them in the strainer, shake them, dump them on the towel, and dry them up. When you do go to freeze them, you do not want to uh, freeze them, you know, soaking wet because, you, you know, if you freeze them with water, that water will freeze crystallize and you start getting that frost burn that nobody likes all right so we got our fleas we got our boiling water now here's the trick i'm going to do it in one big batch you really only want to do it for a 15 count all right any more and you might overcook them so you know 15 to 30 and you can see they're slowly turning orange see that all we're trying to do is just blanch them you know just to preserve them you you boil them for too long you know they say 15 seconds to a minute i'm probably going to try and go you know maybe a little bit after that once we get to that point we're going to dump them back in the strainer all right so it's been 
about 45 seconds so we tried to go somewhere in between and you could just see like they're pretty orange on the outside and all we're gonna do dump them in the strainer here all right put the pot back on the grill now now that we have them you know blanched we're gonna try and get any of that excess water off of them now let's get the towel laid out big key you want to use a towel that you know you're probably not going to use again because it will have an odor afterwards and i mean the odor kind of smells like boiled crabs man if you've ever had a crab boil that's exactly what it smells like and what right now what we're going to try and do just spread them out slowly just dry them off let them air dry a little bit pick out any shells anything that you don't want to bag up that might cut the bag open all right Now, next step, all we're gonna be doing, just counting them off in our bags. I, I'm gonna do about 50 to 75 a bag. And why I'm doing it that way is just to, you know, make the most out of the ones that I'm getting. I don't wanna, you know, bag too many and then each bag, you know, isn't getting used completely. That, you know, that might be the worst case scenario because then, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not a big fan of wasting bait. And see, that's like a perfect bag right there, man. Just to grab and go when you want to go fishing. Now, last step of this process is we're just going to press all the air out of the bag and seal them and then throw them in the freezer. Um, I do see guys that, you know, uh, vacuum seal them. For what we're doing, man, I don't think you need to go that extra, you know, 10 yards. If, if you have a vacuum seal, you know, by all means, it's probably a little bit better than what I'm doing. But I haven't found a difference in, you know, bagging them like this and vacuum sealing them now these baits will be good for about a year i know uh after a year they do start to accumulate a little bit of freezer burn a little bit of ice and you know that softens them and if it gets to that then they're kind of no good but the way we use bait i know that i'm going to be using these in the next year so i'm not too worried well i hope you guys enjoyed today's video as always if you're uh, not a subscriber to the channel click that subscribe button down below if you like what you saw, please click the thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know what you thought. Have a great day.